I hope you can hear me now. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, um, declarations just defines the properties and methods. That's why when we access an object in TypeScript and we are using a library written in JavaScript, we are, have all the methods and properties of that library. It's because of uh, the declaration files. Developer experience. Uh, one reason to use TypeScript is because of the developer experience. So, types prevent bugs, first of all. If we, for some reason, we misspelled writing a method or we are passing a uh, wrong type to a function, if we compile this code, we, always, we automatically get the, um, some f uh, errors uh, by the compiler. So, we don't have this kind of errors um, in runtime, which is nice and it can save us a lot of time. Refactoring code. It's much easier using uh, TypeScript to refactor code. Basically, we are, refactor we are renaming a property in an interface, so uh, it will uh, find all reference to that type and it will change in all places where we are using that property. Pretty nice. Uh, IntelliSense. So, as I said before, uh, when we access an object, we get all properties and methods of that object um, using the declarations. So, it's pretty useful and it increases the developer productivity. Okay, now let's talk about migration. So, now that we know the basics of JavaScript and the advantages, let's migrate from JavaScript to TypeScript. So, our migration goal. Basically, we have a really simple API written in JavaScript. It's using API as a web framework. And our goal is to migrate to TypeScript. Here is a, is a project, if you can check later. So, what is our migration plan? So, first we start by installing TypeScript. We install as a dev dependency. Then we install declarations. In this case, we install the node declarations and the API. So, since we are, using the, we are in the node environment, we need to use to install the declarations for node. And also uh, declarations for API, that is a web framework written in JavaScript. Then we set up our tsconfig.json. Uh, so instead of passing all compiler options um, via argument, we can initialize this tsconfig.json and we can specify all the compiler options. It's much easier. Then we enable uh, this option, allow.js, that basically says to the TypeScript compiler, well, you compile TypeScript and now you will also compile JavaScript code. And then optionally, we can enable this, prop this option, check.js. So instead of just copying the JavaScript code, it will also analyze the JavaScript and report some errors. How? Using JS docs and declaration files. I will show you. Uh, then we just start renaming our JS files to TypeScript, fix errors, and then uh, go back to step four until we migrate the whole application. Now let's... Uh, do a, a simple demo. Uh, well, so can you see my screen? Cool. Uh, so here is the package.json, and as you can see, we just have API as a dependency, and as dev dependencies, I have API, no dec uh, declarations, uh, and TypeScript. Then I just created a few scripts to help me building the code. So let's migrate our first file. Let's migrate our server. So we just go here. We just rename the file to TypeScript, and that's it. Um, let's compile this. Okay, it's running the TSC command, the TypeScript compiler, and as you can see, it generates to our output uh, directory the, the JavaScript code. But as you can see, it's missing the other JavaScript files. So this is the, um, the TypeScript file that was compiled. Um, so let's also, instead of export as a lot JavaScript, we are using export a lot, a lot TypeScript. So to enable compil compiling the JavaScript code, we need to enable this option. So there is like a bunch of compiler options and we are enabling this one, allow.js. So when we uh, enable this option, 
Now the compiler, it looks at the TypeScript files and also to the JavaScript. So here we have our JavaScript code also. So we have our um, TypeScript that was compiled and our JavaScript. And it basically just copy the file uh, into some kind of indentation. Um, so nothing special. Um, so let's try to, to run this. Uh, npm start. So our server is running. Then let's curl our server. And it's returning some stuff. So it's working. So in, as you can see, we have, um, well, some TypeScript code and some JavaScript. But let's make things more uh, interesting. So now I'm, now that we are using the TypeScript uh, compiler, I want to take the full advantages and I'm going to enable this option. Check JS. So instead of just um, compile the JavaScript, it will also analyze the JavaScript code and report some errors. So let's just clear this and if I compile, Okay, yeah, we have errors, so uh, I don't know if you can see it, but basically it's saying that um, type number is not assignable to Boolean in a JavaScript file. So if we go here, it's complaining that it's expecting a Boolean and we are passing a number. And how TypeScript knows this? Because of the GS docs. If we go to the GS docs here, it says that uh, insert is expecting a task, and the task, uh, the done property, uh, is a boolean, and we are passing a number. So we can define types uh, in JS doc using this notation, and it's pretty useful. Um, so let's fix this. Uh, so now we pass a boolean. So, and it was reporting another error here in this file saying that um, <coughs> we are passing a string and we expect a number. And this code, at first, it looks that is correct. Well, we just receive a request, we uh, get the, the param ID, and then we access the database. The thing is, if we go to the get method, in the GS docs, it says that we are expecting a number and you are pass passing a string. And how it knows that params is a string? because of the declarations. So the TypeScript uses the declaration, the happy declarations, and it knows that params is a dictionary of strings. That's why ID is a string. Uh, and here you, we can see the old um, definitions of the request object in EpiJS. So let's just convert our variable to a number. And if we try to compile this, well, no errors. Cool. We just fixed two errors in our JavaScript using TypeScript, which is great. So let's just migrate another file. Um, well, now we are receiving an error. So as you can see, we don't have IntelliSense here. So, But if we had types, we are saying that we are receiving an error. Now we have um, all properties of the error method, error object, so let's just print the message and let's make things even more interesting. So let's enable um, more uh, options in our compiler. So there is a, a bunch of type checking options here. We are going to enable all of them. So if we enable this, now we are saying to the compiler, so if we have like unused local variables or unused parameters, please report errors. And this is true for our JavaScript code and also for our TypeScript code. So let's try to compile this again. Okay, found some errors. So here it's saying that object is possibly undefined. Well, this one is is hard. So why? Because uh, task can be uh, of type task and, or undefined. Why? Because here in the get method, in the 
JS docs, it says that it can return a task or an undefined. And since we enabled um, this option here, strict null checks, it says that, well, task can be null, so we can have a problem here. Let's protect against this problem. So we need to just check if task is null. Well, cool. We catch another problem, and we can just slowly like migrate the whole application from JavaScript to TypeScript. And so we can have people in our team implementing new features in TypeScript and still fixing some problems in JavaScript. We don't need to migrate like at, at once. We can just like smoothly uh, migrate our applications. Let's back to the slides. So let's just recap. Um, so convert JavaScript files uh, to TypeScript and enable allow.js to also compile the JavaScript code. Optionally, we can uh, enable this option, uh, check.js, it's very useful. Uh, and take advantages of the GS doc and declarations to also report errors in our JavaScript code. So, and this allows us uh, to use TypeScript, but not write TypeScript. We can just have a whole application uh, written in JavaScript and having uh, type checking if we enable uh, this option and if we install the declarations. So we can uh, write JavaScript with types. Uh, then, if we want to catch even more errors in our code, we can enable the strict type checking options to detect even more problems. So, and that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are not enabled by default. Uh, well, it's like a TypeScript decision. When we generate the TS config file, uh, it basically you have like all options, and all of them are basically uh, commented. So you just need to uncomment all, all options. Um, there are some rules that we can uh, catch with linters, but if we have if we just use TypeScript, it's much easier.